100 Years, 100 Voices, a St. John Centennial Oral History Project conceived and produced by WSJS Radio, where every day is history. We start in one, two, three. Welcome to WSGS Radio here interviewing Karen Demo. When and why did you attend St. John's? Well, why? It's because my parents sent me here. <laughs> when I graduated class of 93 and I started in pre-kinder, so I was here for 14 years. My earliest memory is walking into that wooden house for pre-K to do arts and crafts. I mean, it was dirt. And swings, we would play outside. And and I remember it just dirt and wood and great grilled cheeses, always. What do you most remember about being a student here? When I first got to St. John's, it was uh, very different than it is now. Pre-kinder was in a little wooden shack. Through the years, it changed a lot, and uh, we had a lot of fun in high school, and I went through teachers that my three older sisters had gone through, so I I knew the teachers well, and they knew my family well, so it was a very great experience because it was um, very familiar, and it felt like family always. Any memories that you'll never forget that you experienced in St. John's? Sure. Uh, The seniors' day off was particularly great. Lunch breaks was a lot of fun. We used to be able to get out of here and and go wherever we wanted during lunch. We had free blocks we could leave as well. Our, my teachers, I had a few of them that were very, very good. And, and uh, our senior advisor, Mr. Charles Warner, who, who was amazing, was one of the most mes- memorable persons that, uh, that I had in school. He was really very good to us. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of teachers that are teaching you guys. And you have Mr. Mannon, who was my social studies teacher, who was the He's hardest. Retired. He's retiring now, but he was the hardest teacher ever. I had Ms. Higuera, a lot of elementary teachers as well. Ms. Mayan and Ms. Salazar were also my teachers, so it's nice to see them teaching you. One great memory I have is, um, and I will always tell Kathy Myatt, is that she actually taught me how to grow alfalfa sprouts in her science class. It was the very best project we ever had. It was so much fun because... All the kids got very involved, and that was, I think, third grade. So imagine what I remember the most about growing alfalfa sprouts, and I still tell her that. My other teachers, like uh, when I was in high school already, Iguera was just an amazing teacher, and she made us learn the preposiciones, like a book you'll never forget the order. I teach you guys that now when you guys go through it. Uh, yeah, those. I have three older sisters that they all graduated from school here. And um, I have a lot of teachers that had all of them, especially Miss Higuera, who would sit there. And by the time she had me in ninth grade, she had had my three sisters. So she would go from uh, oldest to youngest. She would call me Gailey, then Debbie, then Susan. And frustrated, she would end up in my name. And it happened many times to her. Um, so that was that was fun. I had one particular Spanish teacher, Mr. Merlo, who actually taught us how to speak in a in a way that no other teacher had taught us. It was always very culto and very apropiado. He always made sure that whenever he heard us in and out of the classroom, he always corrected us and taught us very well how to manage the Spanish language, like our English, since we were always studying in English. What was your favorite teacher? I loved having Mr. Mannon. He used to make us write these ridiculously long essays, like it had to be 20 pages on X or Y subject, and it had to have three additional pages of X or Y. And he was a very, very hard grader. His, his tests were very, very difficult. Mr. Henner used to give us quizzes every single Friday for physics. Every single Friday he would have missed. His quizzes were very difficult. I had to sleep over at one of my friend's houses so that she could help me study every Thursday night for physics. What year did you struggle with and why? I think I struggled the most when I had Mr. Mannon. I think it was either my junior, I think it was my junior year or my senior year. I don't remember well. My senior year wasn't that difficult. My junior year, I think, was my most difficult year. 
Every year was different. Some years were more difficult depending on the teachers. I will always remember the smell in that lab of, I guess, the formaldehyde and my teacher making me do it. And I think I couldn't eat chicken for a very long time because it reminded me of the insides of the frog. Back when I was in high school, Miss Guardia, well, Miss Melendez now was uh, my principal, so it was uh, very nice to see her back in, in St. John's. I used to go to speak to her all the time and complain about all my teachers. How do you feel that St. John's is turning 100 years old? I feel old. <laughs> but the teachers that have been here longer than I have must feel even older. So I don't feel so bad. What sports did you play? I was on the basketball team. And the first year that I was on the team, I had no idea what I was doing. And the first game, I took that ball and dribbled it and made it in. But on the other side, <laughs> there was I made a point for the other team, actually. <sighs> but I played it for a couple of years. I think all my senior, uh, all my high school years. What special events do you remember experiencing at school? Well, we, the traditional Noche Puerto Riqueña and our ring dance and our graduations. We didn't have Friendship Day back then. Did you have eighth grade prom? We had not prom like you call it now. We had a graduation and I think we had maybe had a little party, but not the kind of parties that you're used to now. We had a big party when we did our ring ceremony, but that was also a big party at a house, not at a hotel. Or a, There was definitely no walking in with your mother or father. And did you guys have field days? We had field days, but we also didn't have back then Torrimar. So, you know, a lot of things have changed. Was school different in your years? Like how? Different how? In what way? Like, did the cafeteria have fans, lights? The cafeteria looked almost the same. There was a stage. We did a lot of our presentations and the ceremonies and our, our ring ceremony. Everything was there. But there was a stage, and that's where we had everything. The cafeteria had, instead of the little tables, they had everything was long benches, tables. And our cafeteria was done by Nitsa, and they, she had the best empanadilla de pizza before. We used to have those almost every day. And they were like cookies, right? And and cookies. Oh, I didn't get the cookies. Did you guys ever win tournaments, Mampi? No, not the St. John's is a lot more active in sports now. We weren't that great as we are now. We are very, very good now. Did you guys have uniforms back then? Because they are not comfortable. <laughs> no, we didn't have uniforms. Uh, but as a mother, I'm so glad that you guys do have. Because I remember being a kid and it being very difficult to figure out what I was going to wear every day for school. We could have just put pants on and a shirt and well, just go. Boys. Yes, you guys are boys, but uh, my mother had four girls, so <laughs> I don't think that uh, she appreciated the problem every day of yeah, what to wear, good. plus the teachers and the administration would have to regulate very well how short the pants would go and how skirts would go. You know, it wasn't as easy as it is now. I am very happy that there are uniforms. My sister Debbie is uh, was part of the group that... Uh, campaigned for the changing of the of the uniforms, um, so you know she made she was one of the people that made it happen. Who was your best friend? My best friend was her name is Luli Sos. Her brother actually Jorge has kids that go here. It can be more than one. Just saying. <laughs> I had a lot of good friends, but she was my best friend from pre kinder to senior year. Do you see? Friends that you had in St. John's? I do. Some of them live here. Some of them actually have kids with my kids in their classes, which is actually kind of fun. From years above or below me, I, I know a lot of them, and they've actually become my friends now as well. And um, the people in my class that don't live here anymore, actually, I keep in touch with them too. I have a few very, very good friends from my High school years that I see a couple times a year, even though they don't live here. I have very, very good memories of my friends. Actually, Mora, who graduated with me, her kids are with my kids, and our, our kids, Ari and Shannon, are super good friends, so that's great. And then, um, actually, Marimar 
Pérez Riera, who is one of my very best friends, her kids are the same exact ages as my two first kids. And she wasn't my friend in high school. She's older, but she was in my sister's class. So it's interesting that uh, you can become friends with people that you've always known but are older or younger. And it's a nice community. Looking back, what perspective could you give about PR at the time? When I went to school here, Puerto Rico was a little safer, so uh, we were allowed to go outside of our school at all times. And after school on Fridays, we'd go wherever the local hangout was, and we weren't so worried about walking around and all the crime that there is now. It was also easier to express yourself because there wasn't as much politically correctness as there is now. So it was more of a freer time for expression and for being a kid. We didn't have as much supervision as us parents give our kids now. We used to hang out um, where the outside of where the bookstore is in that little courtyard. There's tables there, but we're not allowed to sit there. Okay, well, we used to hang out there all the time. And uh, especially when it was time to wait for the book. The bookstore's always been there. So we used to wait for them to open because we always lost something. And I used to always come back from vacation. Like no. now, now we have where to write all our locker codes because we have our phones and iCloud keeps everything so you don't lose it. But over vacation, I wouldn't write down my locker combination. So every time I came back to school, I would have to get a new lock because we couldn't open it because I couldn't remember the combination. <laughs> and what, what were the hangouts outside of school where you would go? We would walk towards the beach a lot in front of the beach and hang out there either early before school or after school. We would go to After school, we'd go to Shannon's or to City Ice Plant, which was like a mini gas station with a pool table down on La de Diego. It's not there anymore. There was no Bonds or Starbucks. or In the park? You never went there? No, we never went to the park. We, did, we went more towards the other side. What was your best memory of your senior year? I think the day of La Fuga. What's La Fuga? Uh, the day that you just take off. We went to a beach. I think we went to Mar Chiquita. We used to go to Manatee all the time to spend the day at the beach over there. My last memory was taking the cruise with my friends after we graduated our senior class trip, the cruise around the islands with my whole class. And that was great. Given that your kids could attend any other school, what are the reasons you chose SJS over other alternatives? Well, besides uh, St. John's having a great education, St. John's was family for me. So I didn't really think of anywhere else to put them. Besides my three sisters putting their kids here, I'm very comfortable with the faculty and the administration. And it, there wasn't really a choice for me. I guess I was completely biased and I, will, I would have done the same thing all over again. Samara Clayman Demo, class of 2018. Ari Clayman Demo, class of 2020. Aton Clayman Demo, class of 2023. Karen Demo, class of 1993.